Hello, welcome to KubeCon. Today, myself, Kesavan, with me, Gaurav from SAP, will be taking you to some of the interesting uh, things about our controllers and Garner and how we leverage the existing Kubernetes capabilities to operate Kubernetes clusters at scale. Let's start from basics. So, how will you run a container? Basically, you have you'll get the libraries, you change the root and set the namespaces and run the camp. Think of a cases where you want to have few number of containers to run, like a search some around 10 to 20 containers. Then you'll go with something like Docker or some other container platforms. Now let's go with a big bang. Now when you have to operate thousands of such containers, what will be the good solution? The quick end will be Kubernetes. So Kubernetes helps you to orchestrate these thousands of containers across across the Kubernetes workloads and then helps you to manage those containers. Kubernetes are nothing but bunch of controllers like Kube Controller Manager, Cloud Controller, QPAP Server, HCD. Now let's take some big organizations where they want to operate thousands of clusters. What is the solution we have in place to operate these many Kubernetes clusters? Rather than just operating clusters, we need across cloud providers like AWS, GCP, Azure, and even on private clouds. We just not stop at creating clusters, but we want some more other than just operating this. We need a quick solution, quick way of managing the clusters, upgrading the clusters which are single click and so on. The other thing to be noticed, like uh, there are a lot many cloud providers available in the market like AWS, GCP, a, BSPR, Azure, AliCloud. Each of them have their own design structures in providing them, provisioning the networks, volumes, virtual machines, etc. But as a Kubernetes developer, we need an, a, a homogeneous clusters so that this helps the developers to be more cloud agnostic. Next comes for the operators. There should be some backup and restore in place for the Kubernetes clusters itself, so that this will help them in hand during disaster recovery times. And people working on Kubernetes are more familiar with going off declarative way of creating a Kubernetes workloads, like just a spec which shows your containers and how many replicas you want to run and just deploy it on Kubernetes. Similar approach, why don't we can't have for our Kubernetes? Say a Kubernetes spec would be like giving a what is the Kubernetes version which you want to run, what is the worker node type, on what cloud provider you want to run, what is the OS image you want to run, and those stuffs. This will be a good one, right? Next thing comes more important is about extensibility. A solution which needs to be more extensible to adopt new features when needed, and it should be extensible to adopt new cloud providers whenever in place in the future. So we'll see what are the common uh, cluster setup how we have in current situations. We'll take a some small example of a bunch of worker nodes, which have some leader nodes in which we host our control plane components. Here you can see we have HA for leader nodes to may have a HA for our control plane components. Let's take some example of different Kubernetes clusters of varying sizes. Here you could see, there are a lot, a few worker nodes in one Kubernetes cluster, and there are a lot of Kubernetes worker nodes in some other Kubernetes cluster. Here, the load is uneven. When you think of fewer worker machines, big, small, small clusters, the leaders are underutilized, leader nodes. When you're going for bigger clusters, the leaders should be overutilized, and this will limit us in scaling capabilities. So we want to, how we will see, how our approach will help us in solutioning these cases. Let's take a end user cluster. Here we call it as a shoot cluster. Here you can see the normal Kubernetes workloads and our leader node, which has the control plane components. We'll have one more seed cluster that this is nothing but another Kubernetes cluster. We just take the control plane components of the shoot cluster, end user cluster, and place it as workloads in this seed cluster. Either way, we host control pin components of multiple Kubernetes cluster and we just operate them. Now, who is going to uh, take care of this shoot and seed clusters? It's our guy, Gardener. Gardener is nothing but Kubernetes workloads which run in another Kubernetes clusters. Here you could see Gardener comprises of some more components like 
similar to kubernetes like gardner api server gardner controller manager garden scheduler and gardner dashboard this molux will take into a simple approach what we want to deliver we want here you can see everywhere we speak about kubernetes not a, nothing apart from that here we delegate we delegate only the worker nodes to the end users and the gardener will take care of managing the worker nodes and as well as the control plane components let's speak about it is more uh, simple architecture right let's add some chaos in it here you could see this is a complete gardener architecture which comprises of all control plane components of gardener and you, the control plane components of particular particular suite clusters and how they communicate with each other let's speak about kates everyone was familiar with kates and they learn kubernetes for that gardener also follows the same design principle we don't want to reinvent the wheel we just learn one concept that is kubernetes and apply uniformly over to you gaurav yeah uh, so uh, let's have a recap of how kubernetes works uh, so that we can draw parallel from there uh, for the design of a gardener solution Uh, so we know that we have a Kube API server running in the Kubernetes cluster, and we also have kubelets running in each of the nodes. Now, when a user wants to create a pod, it, it the user can provide a pod YAML, pod resource YAML. Kube scheduler can schedule this pod in in a node, and then kubelet can take care of running the pod in the in the node. Sim on the similar lines, we have Gardener API server, uh, which which manages the custom resources. and we have gardenlets which are running in each of the seed cluster uh, seed clusters now when a user provides a shoot resource yaml shoot custom resource yaml which is nothing but a kubernetes re, uh, uh, create a cluster request from the user the gardener scheduler can pick up the uh, pick up this request and can schedule the uh, control plane of the shoot cluster in a seed cluster and gardenlet then then uh, can take care of uh, deploying the control plane components in the seed cluster Uh, so a uh, gardener controller manager itself is enough to manage lots and lots of kubernetes cluster but for a true scalability uh, we would want to distribute the logic of uh, uh, deploying the control plane components in the seed cluster uh, we take the learnings from kubelet kubelet is a primary node agent uh, which runs on every node and is responsible for keeping a pod running and healthy similarly uh, gardenlet is also a garden agent Uh, which runs on each of the seed cluster and can manage the shoot clusters in uh, which are running or which are responsible uh, uh, which are running in the seed cluster it takes over the job from gardener controller manager uh, for reconciling the shoot controller resource uh, shoot uh, cluster resources it works in the similar way uh, uh, the kubelet works and it depends on the lease objects for the seed heartbeats it paves a way to grow and operate as many shoot clusters uh, across a gardener landscape uh, it is not necessary to run this gardenlet in inside a seed cluster as long as it can talk to the seeds api server which is which is running in the gardener cluster it also opens up the doors uh, for running a shoot clusters uh, under a firewall uh since the control plane is managed outside separately by gardener uh now uh, since we also want to provide uh, extensibility uh which means that we, uh, we it should be very easy for uh, a gardener uh, provider to add support for multiple cloud providers we uh, there are something called extension controllers uh these are cloud specific controllers which know how to talk to the cloud providers and uh, manage the dns vpcs uh, uh, or other uh, uh, infrastructure needs uh now the extension controllers uh, uh, template can be provided as a custom resource to the gardener and then gardener can take care of uh, deploying these extension controllers in the seed cluster so that uh, when a request comes for a, seed, a shoot cluster for a specific uh, 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 cloud provider in that case these controllers can uh, uh, deploy the required infrastructure in the in 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 the cloud providers uh now kubernetes does not have uh, uh, a way or it does not support uh, a way to create a provision or deprovision machines in the infrastructure so we rely on a component called machine controller manager 
uh, which works on the same principles uh, uh, as of uh, 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 controller manager. So it provides a declarative way of uh, uh, managing the VMs, of creating the VMs. So uh, in the same way that we have deployment controller, we have machine deployment controller as part of machine controller manager. Machine deployment custom resource takes the number of replicas that of the machines that needs to be provisioned, and it also takes the machine template, which which includes uh, details about the machine, the size, or the OS image that that uh, the machine should have. This machine deployment controller then creates a machine set control, a machine set object. This machine set object uh, is picked up by the machine set controller, and it creates the machines. The number of machines that are created are uh, 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 specified in the replicas field. And then the machine controller uh, create uh, picks up these machine objects and then talks to the uh, cloud providers uh, to actually provision the machines, which can then join the Kubernetes clusters as as node objects. Uh, uh, to keep the control plane uh, up and healthy uh, all the time uh, and to have minimal downtime, uh, we also depend on a component called dependency watchdog. So what can happen is when HCD or the API server is down, uh, the, uh, the other controllers in the control plane can go into exponential crash loop back off. Uh, and if, uh, if and when API server comes back up, it can take a long time for those uh, uh, for those controller ports to start uh, running again. So what, what what dependency watchdog does is that it keeps a watch on uh, the HCD endpoints for the availability of HCD, uh, and it also uh, keeps a watch on the control plane ports uh, that are going into crash loop back off. And uh, if it sees that HCD is down, uh, which can potentially result in controller ports uh, uh, controller manager pods uh, uh, to be down, it, it shoots off or it deletes those uh, uh, pods so that new pod is immediately created, which is not in exponential back off anymore. And uh, it can start as soon as uh, uh, as soon as the HCD and API server are back up. Uh, we also rely on cluster autoscaler, uh, which we have forked uh, cluster autoscaler and adapted it to work with machine deployment objects. Uh, uh, with this, we can auto scale our shoot clusters, basically the user clusters and the seed cluster, which is managing uh, the shoot clusters themselves. Uh, but a potential problem there could be uh, that if a HCD uh, pod is scheduled on a node that is getting scaled down, it can lead to uh, uh, long downtimes. So uh, to prevent uh, such cases, we deploy HCDs uh, in a separate dedicated worker pool uh, so that the uh, worker pool that Course, the other control plane components of the shoot cluster can still uh, be scaled uh, uh, scaled down uh, when the load decreases. Uh, some of the components like kubeapi server can scale both horizontally and vertically uh, but since vp and hpa uh, don't work well together uh, when it comes down to the cpu and memory metrics alone uh, we we rely on a controller uh, that is hvpa controller it provides a, uh, a way to uh, it provides a user with a way to provide uh, uh, um, the ways how HPA and VPA recommendations can be uh, used together uh, using a weight-based scaling. So user can provide uh, weights that needs to be given to HPA and VPA recommendations. It, uh, it also does some extra things. It also provides some extra uh, flexibility and functionality. So for example, a user can uh, provide the thresholds uh, which can be used to uh, uh, so, which provides a way for HVPA controller to apply the recommendations only when certain data or the change is, uh, is reached in the recommendations uh, by, by HPA or VPA. It also, uh, we can also provide scaling policies uh, which can, with which a user can, um, for example, mention a time slot or during which only a certain kind of scaling should take place. So uh, let's see how all of this comes together uh, to provide resilience uh, and a disaster recovery scenario. So in case a shoot cluster has issues, uh, so the, if the user's uh, end user's cluster uh, has issues, in those kind of cases, the Kubernetes itself, since all of the control plane components are running in pods and is managed by Kubernetes, uh, the control plane pods can be brought back up by the Kubernetes itself. 
if the machines of uh, uh, if the packing machines of uh, the uh, of the users cluster are down then machine controller manager can take care of uh, uh, bringing up uh, new machines and clearing up the failed machines from the infrastructure uh, we rely on etcd backup restore to provide uh, uh, backup of the clusters uh, state itself uh, so in case of uh, uh, etcd failure we can uh, uh, use HCD's backup, which is stored in the cloud, uh, to restore the state of, uh, uh, of of the cluster. And Gardner itself can reconcile uh, the state of the shoot cluster and preserves the essence of the shoot cluster itself. So in case uh, the seed cluster, which hosts the control planes of many, many shoot clusters itself is down, uh, so in those kind of cases, uh, we, we rely on the HCD's backup and restore functionality. So for example, let's say we have two seed clusters and uh, uh, one of the seed cluster uh, has the uh, host the control plane of the shoot cluster. Now this control plane, uh, 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 the state of the cluster itself is backed up in a blob store. And in case a seed goes down, uh, the gardener can then schedule the control plane of the, of the shoot cluster in a separate uh, in a separate seed and uh, when it uh, when the HCD starts there it can restore uh, from the blob store the, the state of the cluster and can start managing the shoot cluster from there so uh, time for a small demo over to you case one Yeah, Gauru. So here you can see how as simple as that to create a Kubernetes cluster with our Garner beautiful dashboard. Just to mention what is the cluster name and is a given the worker nodes, what is the machine type and uh, on the cloud provider you just select and uh, Garner dashboard gives you the cluster in few minutes. Let's be a more like of declarative way of approaching Kubernetes cluster, right? Let's see in a quick demo. Yeah. Here you can see a short spec of uh, shoot custom resource. Here you can see the add-on Kubernetes dashboard, ingress controller, and the cloud provider is mentioned as AWS. Gonna provide a feature of adding hibernations as well, so that you can, for the end users, can save the cost for creating clusters. Next comes for the uh, networks. Here you can mention the network types and the controller worker groups. What is the machine type you need? What is the uh, machine? A class you want to create and number of worker nodes. That's it. We just apply the shoot YAML in the above pan. You can see the Garner cluster where we create a shoot custom resource. And below pan, you could uh, we'll have a watch on the control pin components which will be provisioned in one of the seed cluster. We just to have a watch on the namespace. In the upper pan, you could see a progressing bar for having the how much the cluster has been created. Here you can see a Terraform part, which is in the back end creating the infrastructure resources like VPC networks for the particular Kubernetes cluster. Now, HCD is up and running. We'll wait for other control plane components. Here, you could see Cloud Controller Manager and the CSI driver in crash loop backup because the QBP server is still not at running. So how, how like Gaurav mentioned, the dependency watchdog will keep on watching this crash loop back of parts. And once the QBAP server is up and running, it just kills the cloud controller manager and those things. Here now you could see the replica set replaced with the new cloud controller manager without uh, waiting for us to go for an exponential crash loop back of. Now we'll wait for a few more minutes. We just made a speed up so that we can have a quick view of when the cluster is created. You can see a progress it's at 87 percentage and uh, almost all the control plane components like api server cube controller manager our machine controller managers are ready and now the cluster is ready to use so coming back to our main uh, end of the story how uh, okay yeah coming back to the end of the presentation take e takeaways so with the garner we are able to deliver fully managed homogeneous clusters everywhere. At SAP, we operate thousands of Kubernetes clusters across multiple cloud providers like Alibaba, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and even on specific government cloud as well. We run workloads like HANA, which is an in-memory database. So uh, 
uh, if you want to reach out to us more about want to learn about corner and involved with us just reach out to us in any of the links below thank you thank you uh, so time for uh, uh, questions uh, and answers Okay, reading out the questions which are from the audiences. Okay. Uh, first question is Gardner Apache 2.0 from top to bottom. Are there any components that are not published? So all the components which I have showcased now are in the GitHub are completely open source. Nothing has been under the hood. Uh, next question, uh, how to manage uh, Garner clusters? Garner managers, I think Gauru has an answered it. it. Gauru? Okay. So are there, is it possible to change the VPN to another type like WireGuard? So here, uh, we uh, Garner itself has a package of uh, providing a, uh, VP, uh, VPN inside it. Uh, it's possible to change as per your own need. OK, many of you asked about uh, sharing the slides. Yeah, definitely we will share the slides with you. Next, uh, how do you support uh, on-prem clusters? So Gardner provides an wide variety extensibility to profile to offer uh, across different cloud providers. And uh, we can even uh, if you have your own cloud providers or anything, it's just an extensibility to create your own uh, cloud provider extensions. And uh, we can uh, you can be it, even Gardner can run on on-prem clusters. Okay, does Gardner work with other OS like Flatcar, Talos? So, uh, there is an option. So, it, uh, Gardner is completely extensible as, uh, Gardner, as Gauru told. You can bring your own OS inside this. Uh, right now, uh, we have our own specific OS like Gardner Linux and uh, it can be on any other OS systems for the worker nodes can be uh, added to Gardner. Gauru, your line? Hi. Uh, yeah, I uh, I had a, a network issue, okay. uh, so I am back. Uh, so uh, okay. I will also uh, try to uh, go through some of the questions. Uh, so uh, one is how does Gardner yeah. compare to Cluster API? Um, so uh, we have concrete, concrete plans to be compliant with Cluster API. Cluster API today uh, supports extensible control plane providers. So the default is right now QBDM. And uh, uh, the plan is to extend uh, the control plane provider uh, CRD uh, with Gardner provider. So uh, yes, uh, it's, it, we have a concrete plan to uh, uh, get on uh, with it. Uh, so uh, another question is, what is the largest shoot that we are running? So uh, the largest shoot is not really uh, uh, limited by Gardner itself, uh, but since we try, uh, from what we have tested, we have tested with 250 plus uh, shoot nodes, uh, but it is not really about the number of nodes, but what kind of load we are putting on the API server and to how much extent we are uh, we are ready to uh, load the API server. So we have tested from our own requirements and we have uh, uh, been able to load the API server to around 1000 or 1500 requests per second. Uh, where we were running uh, uh, 110 node, uh, pods per node uh, and each, uh, of these pods also had secrets uh, and config maps attached to them. So uh, they had their own load on the API server because of uh, those kind of configurations. Uh, so uh, another Next question is... Uh, how does... Uh, yeah. uh, how does ahead, Gardner please. manage Kubernetes cluster version upgrades? Yeah. 
how does gardner manage the kubernetes cluster version upgrades so uh, you can see from the thing uh, what whichever the upstream uh, things coming from kubernetes releases uh, gardner make sure it's also as part of uh, uh, gardner we take the gardner uh, kubernetes release versions and uh, keep uh, upstream to the gardner so big you can get the upstream kubernetes release versions on gardner as well okay uh, another question is uh, do the shoot cluster need to be homogeneous or they can be from multiple managed cloud providers so as of now uh, the shoot clusters can only be configured in a uh, bunch single shoot cluster can only be configured uh, in one cloud provider but one gardener cluster can manage shoot clusters across cloud providers so uh, you can at the same time create uh, multiple kubernetes clusters which can be managed by a single gardener cluster which can span across uh, uh cloud providers or even uh, bare metal so the support is there for bare metal as long as the infrastructure provider uh, provides a clear api for creating uh, uh machines load balancers volumes attaching volumes and things like that as long as th these kind of uh, uh apis are provided uh, gardner can manage uh, the kubernetes cluster and those yeah uh, uh one more question is uh, digital ocean supported yeah uh, there are some pull request i believe which are on the part uh, we can it's just like uh, how you onboard a, a new cloud provider we just have to create an extension for the particular cloud providers and it's uh, definitely possible to onboard work with uh, digital ocean as well okay a lot of people are asking uh, for slides also so uh, just to let everyone know uh, the slides will be available uh, after around 40 48 hours uh, on the website uh, so another question is can we use hp and vpa together so uh, uh, in from our experience hp and vpa when they are just left on their own uh, and are left on their own to work with the same set of matrices like cpu and memory uh, there might be some clashes and uh, some stability but what we have tried with hvpa controller uh, is to kind of get control of uh, actually do the scaling uh, ourselves and let hp and vpa only work uh, to give the recommendations based on the usages so once the recommendations from hp and vpa are in uh, hvpa controllers takes those recommendation and the idea is to uh, scale according to a uh, uh, a spec with, that is provided by the user to the hvpa controller and uh, so this is how we we have been trying to run both hp and vpa together and uh, till now it, uh, we we are very happy uh, with the way we were able to make it work and uh, it and the results have, have been promising so we use this for our cube api server scaling since this is one of the components that can scale both horizontally and vertically and one more question which will gardner can manage the clusters across different data centers yeah i think you meaning different data centers it's like applying uh, to the regions yeah so we have the clusters across different multiple or over 50 plus regions across the uh, different uh, cloud providers so it's just like a uh, uh, garden let lies on the particular seed cluster and it manages those two clusters laying in that particular uh, seed cluster so it's possible it's already in that uh, another question is uh, uh, can it work with openshift or only specific distribution of kts uh, so uh, we are working on uh, uh, collaborating with ibm and uh, reddit so that uh, a support for openshift flavored kubernetes can also be um, provided on ibm machines Uh, another question is does gardner work with other os like flatcar telos uh, so right now uh, since uh, the architecture is extensible uh, uh, the support for oss can be plugged in as an extension and uh, we support a bunch of uh, operating systems already Uh, could it be used for bare metal kubernetes clusters yes uh, as already answered uh, it can be used as long as uh, we already uh, support bare metal stack uh, the the metal stack which uh, for example which provides uh, uh, bare metal uh, infrastructure uh, one more question if i want to want a shoot cluster to be upgraded to a new 
cube version on the run without downtime does garner automate the upgrade process can garner do it in a canary fashion so that the version upgrade is rolled back in case of trouble uh yeah what happened means uh, they might have seen in uh, Gaurav, Gaurav's speech like uh, there is a component uh, machine controller manager which takes care of uh, draining the nodes and uh, setting the workloads and the, another bringing up the new uh, worker nodes with a particular Kubernetes version. So it works seamlessly as a canary version in Garner. It's just uh, in the dashboard, you just have to just have press up. Uh, button press to upgrade your Kubernetes cluster. And you can even uh, mention the maintenance window time where uh, the cluster upgrade has to be happen. Uh, another question is how to manage Gardner cluster itself or the Gardner manages the Gardner cluster itself. So uh, the first cluster, the Gardner cluster needs to be created somehow. Uh, it is not managed by Gardner itself. It can be any uh, cluster that is created using uh, or it could be GKE or AKS, uh, but after that, once Gardner cluster is created, the creation of C clusters and shoot clusters can be all, all the C clusters and shoot clusters can all be managed by Gardner. I think we have answered uh, almost all the questions, I guess, Doro. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see if, uh, in case like I have missed, I'm missing uh, some of the questions. If we, are, if we have missed some of the questions, please feel free to reach out on uh, the Slack channel. Uh, or, or you can also reach out to the Gardner uh, uh, team uh, from the Slack channel link that is provided on the slide. So uh, thanks again for uh, everyone for tuning in. Uh, thanks, Case One. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Happy learning. Bye.